Hi everyone, this is Fabio and I will talk with you about why SRE is the best way to improve efficiency in crisis time like we are living today. It really reminds me about that song of Pooh Fighters, times like this, and uh, we are all pretty sure that these times are not being as easy as we would like to. So we will deep dive in this, um, this theme. We will talk about history, what's going on on the financial markets and why companies should invest their efforts in uh, improving SRE practices inside their companies and with their teams, right? A little bit of uh, history and what and things that happened in the last decades. We were living a, a huge age of transformation, as we call the age of digital transformation. Everybody talked about it for a long, long time in, in many conferences, articles, and uh, you know, a lot of companies had a lot of money because of this, because uh, every company in the world was running a digital transformation. And uh, we I put some things here that uh, I believe there are the most important regarding some uh, things that happen in the world, some technology uh, advances and things like that. So. Uh, I would like to start talking about virtual virtualization. Um, as an old guy like me, at the beginning, every project we had, we need uh, a server to to work in the in the the project. So we had to buy this the server, install the server, and then start working. And and now and then during the this period, we have the virtualization that is the mother of the cloud computing. That's a, a huge uh, event that we still see today that changed everything around the world. We have a, a completely move in the way we uh, did the project management. We moved from the waterfall to an agile methodology where we were responsible, where we are supposed to implement software as soon as we can every time as possible as as soon as a, a sprint was done we should deploy software to our customers so uh because of that we have the the rise of devops that was the end of that silos inside the it departments between uh operations and development so after that, and after the the launching of the iPhone, we saw uh, a huge adoption of mobile technologies. And after that, a few years later, you know, we are coming closer to our uh, current time. We have the COVID-19 pandemics, which uh, accelerated a lot all of the digital transformation around the world at the beginning we have some companies firing people but sooner uh, just a few months later we, the market was really hot a lot of companies working to get digital in order to guarantee that everybody could still work and you know consuming inside their homes during the period of uh, isolation and things like that. So we have a lot of opportunities during these pandemics. And during this period, we have something that's really strange that was called quiet quitting, where everybody was, you know, I'm not so happy here today and uh, I will just do what I need to do to keep my job. And uh, that was called quiet quitting. It was something that was you know, a lot of companies were, you know, concerned about it. Uh, another situation that we had was regarding developers that was having many simultaneous jobs, you know, uh, developers working in two, three, four companies at the same time. 
because the market was so hot there were so many opportunities and everybody was trying to get their money from that so we have this situation with overworking as i like to say and regarding technology in the 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 end of the last few years everybody was talking about web 3.0 metaverse and nft and now what we are talking about what changed a lot <laughs> during this last few months we are living now what i can i like to call the age of digital efficiency we are not concerned anymore on, on just being digital we are concerned about being efficiency efficient in, uh, in the digital way why is that happening after the pandemics we saw a bubble exploding around the world in the economic scenario we have a world in a recession in many countries you have a, a, an inflation that we didn't see for many years a lot of companies are cutting their budgets you know everybody that was you know uh, working to uh, manage their budgets for 2023 they are reviewing these results how much they will invest in, in they would invest in this year uh and then start the the wave of layoff lay, layoffs as i will explore a little more in the next few slides and we saw a new technology emerging that we that it was not uh you know on our rear view mirror every nobody was expecting that we should have this change uh around the technology but the chat gpt is uh, a revolution that we are seeing in the last few months and uh, that's changing everything everybody's feeling pressure to be more effective and chat gpt could be also an opportunity moving forward we have here um the layoffs you know this is you know panic in the world panic 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 around the world because what was a hot market is now a market where we don't have a lot of opportunities so just a few examples uh, amazon during the last few months had eliminated around 20, 27,000 positions, right? 27,000 employees was fired from Amazon. Another big tech here, Microsoft laid off 10,000 employees. Salesforce, they reduced 10% of their workforce. Meta, you know facebook uh they have eliminated around 13 percent of their employees during the last year and uh they they expect to do more during this one accenture the a huge consulting company they laid off 19,000 people so what does it bring to us everybody's losing their job many people not everybody for sure because we have billion people in the world but we have a lot of people losing their jobs and that's something that had put a lot of pressure inside companies and on thinking what should we do to guarantee that we won't have to fire anyone nobody likes to fire people I'm an executive, I had to fire some people in the past, but you know, that's not a pleasant uh, situation. So nobody wants to be in that position. And uh, the object of my lecture here is how we can use SRE to prevent this kind of situation. So let's see in the next few slides. As I told before, 2023 is the year of efficiency everybody's trying to save money and i like to share something with you guys uh i was working in a huge company 
few uh, few months ago, and uh, I was responsible for doing some uh, saving strategy, you know. But what was the expectation of my company to do to generate savings, adopting uh, power platform and uh, dashboards? You know how would I was supposed to improve the developers efficiency just doing that it's not possible and uh, that's the reason why i'm not working there anymore because that's something that i strongly don't believe i believe that you should do something more structural and one of my hypotheses is investing in sre to do so and let's see what i can bring to you in order to do that but in the end, what all these 2003 crises brings to us, what does it mean in the end? Obviously, investment cut, no investment. People and companies would only invest what they can. And that's, you know, something that you should invest because nobody wants to get the risk of losing money and soon had to fire anyone. Everybody's searching for saving on operations. Okay, I will not grow. And how can I save money inside my operations? How can I automate my operations and generate some savings? How can I better use my team to work better, generate more, right? And as we all know, some companies are staking this moment to eliminate some people that was not performing well. People that they knew that were, uh, you know, uh, working in many companies at the same time, things like that. Companies are taking this moment to, you know, I will do some kind of diet here with my employees. I have somebody that is not performing well or maybe they are working here in two more consulting firms. That's not uh, something that should be acceptable, but people were doing that. So companies are taking these opportunities too. And what is on the table for us? What we as technologists uh, should be thinking of? We should be thinking about efficiency, and adopting AI. Everybody's talking about chat GPT, but at this very moment, I cannot say that's very easy for us to adopt chat GPT in an order to, you know, change the game and save people. But what I can say is that if we, if we can invest our efforts on efficiency and adopting SRE the right way, I strongly believe that we can do a good job and same some positions, right? And we will explore more. And why? Why should companies invest on SRE? First of all, first of all, SRE will improve system reliability. If your system is more reliable, probably you, you won't have many incidents. And then we go to the second point faster incident resolution. You know, if you solve your incidents in a faster way, your products will be available for your customers for many, more time. You won't let, you won't lose uh, any selling, things like that. So one thing uh, turns to the other. I have a more reliable system. So I will resolve my incidents faster. I will increase my agility because as we all know here, SRE and DevOps are kind of brothers, twin brothers that have that share some similar missions. So our agility will increase significantly. So that would be something really important for companies. SRE would increase the collaboration inside the company. When uh, operation teams and development teams work together, they seem to collaborate more, 
they create more confidence with each other and so they will be able to deliver best software improve all the 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 environment inside the IT department and I would believe that it would really diminish uh, the pressure under these teams. Everybody in technology in these last months are feeling very pressured, afraid of losing their jobs. And uh, when we work in this collaboration environment, it would bring some peace for these people and they will see the results of their efforts right that would be really great for your company and of course if we have all of this all of our customers will be more satisfied you know the the systems that we use will be available for more time we won't have incidents things like that so customer satisfaction should in increase and that would probably help us with our nps and other uh, indicators that we might have in our company okay continuing why should companies invest you know uh, continuing reduce downtime costs every time our application is down we are losing money with SRE we won't do that we don't lose that money we will increase our efficiency it's the, the theme of our <laughs> lecture so when you implement and when you're in a mature way working with SRE, you will increase your, your whole efficiency. All your team will work better. You will deliver more software. If you don't have to spend so many time fixing bugs or working in incidents, there's a huge probability that you can spend more time developing new features and bring more business to your company. You will have a better resource allocation because people won't be investing time fixing bugs, but developing new features or improving on your, your environment. Everything, you know, it's a uh, virtual cycle. You will improve your scalability when you have a moment where you have a lot of actors in your platforms, your scalability will be doing very well because your team will spend, spend not invest a lot of time improving this scalability. And for sure, you will reduce your maintenance cost because you won't have some bugs, you won't have problems in your infrastructure, you will scale faster and then all your maintenance costs will, should be reduced. And following here, this is really interesting because we always think about uh, SRE considering that we would improve our internal uh, environment and uh, the services that we would provide to our customers. But what about consulting firms? Why should they invest in SRE? They are under a huge pressure. Uh, I believe that a uh, higher pressure than the other companies because when uh, we have any cries, uh, the first first thing companies cut is the investment on technology, and that's what make that that's the main reason we have consulting firms. So a lot of them are under a huge pressure of customers of clients canceling their projects and why should they invest on SRE in their development teams and their practices they should adopt SRE because it will differentiate them and that's what will be on the table for the consulting firms because when we have now uh, chat gpt and everybody under crisis the the main factor to decide uh, between a company or other is paying the same money i would have more code more uh, application 
what will be better for me investing in this company instead of the other. And when a company a consulting firm that adopt SRE in their practices, in their culture, probably will uh, deliver more software. Not only deliver more, but deliver in better way with a better code, low bugs, and uh, thinking about the scalability. You know, the software that you, you will deliver will reduce the mean time to repair, will improve the security of the applications, and will be more reliable on the on the perspective of the the application of the architecture right so we should invest everyone in sre during this period and some we and when we talk about sre we always have a lot of uh qualitative results you know we talk about many of them uh in the last few uh, slides, but I, I'd like to, to bring some quantitative results for you. For example, Google. Google is the father, the creator of the SRE. And Google has reported that SRE has helped them reduce its incident rate by 50%. It's too much. And improved their reliability in 99.95 percent it's too many it's too much linkedin after adopting sre they uh reduce its incident rate by 85 percent a lot of things and the company also reported that it was able to improve the mttr by seven by 75 percent too much Netflix, everybody likes Netflix, right? You know, uh, another company that's under a huge pressure, not only because of everything that's going on the market, but because of the signature crisis too, because everybody was sharing their signature. But Netflix adopt uh, SRE since 2010, and they reported that it has helped them uh, achieve an availability of 99.99%. Too much paint. It's too much. And Netflix also reports that it has reduced its downtime by 9%, 90% after adopting SRE. And last but not least, Dropbox. They reduce the outage by 90% after adopting SRE and they reduced the number of incidents by 75%. When we are under attack in a moment where everybody needs to cut in the bone, this kind of, kind of reducing would help a company to save a lot of jobs, right? So let's continue here and here i would like to share some data from the market related to state of sre and why we have a huge opportunity take a look of how is the adoption of the sre we have six percent of the market that's totally immature in the practice 32% that's emerging, only emerging. We have 42 that's maturing. It's too much. If we sum all of these, we have 80% of the market that's not adopting completely the SRE. Can you see the amount of this opportunity that we have here? 80% of the market has the opportunity to save money, to improve their operations only by adopting SRE practices combined to DevOps and etc. 
it's a lot of things. Let's see some, some other. Other important information regarding the SREs, what they are dedicating most of the time doing and how this relates to efficiency. Seven, almost 70% reducing the MTTR. It's a lot of thing. It's a lot of thing when you're spending all this time and uh, it will bring the result. 67 reducing MTTR, 60 building and maintaining automation code. Automation would generate a lot of savings and efficiency and time free to spend and more important activities for your team and your company. Ensuring security vulnerabilities are detected and eliminated quickly. Security is a huge problem for tech companies. So you have this SRE team spending more than 50% of your time. Design experiments, running tests to reduce risk of production failure. Nobody wants to have failure in production. And you can see here all of this information about how you can use your team in a better way. What are the expecting expectations and demands on SRE? What they want to achieve? And uh, which of the following tasks do SRE in your organizations dedicate the largest amount of their time on an average week? The same as we saw before. Reducing MTTR, things like that. Building automated code. It's really good. It's investment. You're investing a lot of time here, a lot of effort. For in the future, you can save a lot of time and your operation of incidents and outages. How does your organization evaluate service level for its applications and infrastructure? That's something that I would like to indicate here. A lot of companies work with OKRs and key performance indicators, but the heart of uh, SRE is the SLOs. So 75% of the companies that answer this state of SRE, they work with SLOs. And why is that so important? Because uh, SLOs would really, you know, as we know, everybody knows here in this uh, conference, SRL, SLO is the key indicator for us to work with SRE. And we have a lot of difficulties working with this. So investing a lot of time in SRE would request invest a lot of time defining SLOs the right way. We have a huge challenge here in defining and to getting this information because we have too much information, too much data inside our company and we have to clean this data, uh, you know, like all data science that we, we know we have to work a lot to get this data really good in order to be effective managing our SLOs. And the SLOs are the core of the success of the SRE because with the SLO, we, would have, we will have our error budget and the error budget is what will uh, uh, help us being, uh, provide them a safer environment where we can have some experiments and where we can even get wrong sometimes. So the, difficult, the difficulties that we have creating and defining SLOs, we have too many, too much data, too much data sources, too many metrics, monitoring, tool, monitoring tools that 
don't allow to easily get that SLO. So you have to invest a lot of time and effort defining and really getting your SLOs. Continuing here, some are really good SLOs to implement in order to be successful in your SRE. And here we have some SLOs for, uh, for the business point of view, even the mobile ones. For the business and end user centric, why right? that's you know another buzzword, you know always availability. We have to to measure the engagement. We have to measure the user satisfaction, the conversion of our platform. How is that going? And of course, we have our performance SLOs. How is our utilization, response time, traffic? saturation success rate every every one of these slos are really important for us from the technical point of view and for mobile applications everyone is mobile today right so app adoption availability of the app response time you should provide a good experience in sre will help you a lot improving this response time Success rate, crashes, and of course, app rating. You know, everybody wants to know how is your company evaluation on the App Store? And uh, how would you identify, how the companies identify the targets for each of your SLOs? 26% do that based on end user experience. 24 based on historical data and industry standards and 20% on our system on however our system is doing today right and who in the company helps in defining these SLOs the SRE team is responsible for 80-80% security which is really important and uh they really contribute a lot for this SRE adoption and for our success. 49% from the business, 47 infrastructure, 45 de DevOps, 41 operations, platform 36, development 33, and application 32. Where we have some other opportunities here. That's not the theme of this lecture but as soon as you evolve adopting devops and sre you should consider evolving to an ai ops environment you know using everything that you can to automate the response for everything that happens in your operation and you know all your the platforms that you might use would help you provide that and i strongly believe that we with all the advances that we have in uh with chat dpt that would be a, a reality even for uh I, I would believe that chat dpt and all these new generative ai would increase the adoption of ai ops and last but not least fine ops you know we have a lot of expenditure unnecessarily expenditure with uh, cloud costs so we should work in order to keep this on the right way deploying exactly what's needed for each application and for each environment so we should work to keep the fine ops working really well and sre and devops right we are coming to the end of this lecture and i would like to to share with you some key takeaways of this lecture that I really like you guys to, to save in your mind for this year and probably the next one that should be harder years for us working with technology, right? We have SRE increase the commitment and morale of the team. We are in a moment where people are feeling, are afraid they are not feeling confident. They are afraid of losing their jobs. 
SRE increase the commitment of their working together and improve their morale. That will be great for your company. Besides the obvious qualitative benefits, as we've seen, SRE generates quantitative results. You know, we should, we believe, and we should insist in our, inside our companies that we have quantitative results that are feasible and that they generate uh, economic and financial returns to our company. We will increase our agility as a company. We will be faster and then we should invest in SRE. Even, even for consulting firms, it will be a huge differentiation. You can sell uh, SRE projects and you can adopt SRE practices in your development. So your team will be really differentiated. And the end, define and work for achieving SLOs should be the main objective in the adoption. You should work well in defining the SLOs that will be the most important thing in the SRE adoption, right? The SLO will provide you the error budget and uh, everything that you can do will be based on that. So that's it, that's it, folks. That's all folks for this. Uh, again, my name is Fabio here. You have my QR code for my uh, LinkedIn. It was uh, a huge pleasure to be here. I'm, re I'm really thankful for the opportunity of sharing my knowledge and my experience with you guys. And let's embrace SRE and make this world better. Thank you and ha have a nice, here for every one of you. Bye-bye.